Welcome to Croatia, where the IOM European Championship is about to begin. A very large number of these spectacular 1-meter radio-controlled boats have arrived at the beautiful island of Sres, a destination for many sailing events. Competitors were at the Camp Kovacin in Sres early so as to prepare their boats carefully. Small size doesn't mean there isn't a host of things to take care of before a major race such as this one. There are so many factors that determine a competitive performance, several features that need constant adjustment. Following some last-minute trimming, the competitors welcome the chance to finally test the boats in the water before they board on the motorboat of the race committee, which would transfer them to the city's small and picturesque port. Where there, they received a warm welcome from the locals on this cloudy day and also had the opportunity to see for themselves the area selected for the exhibition race, scheduled for later. Before they could start, more than 70 competitors gathered here in Sres took a few more minutes to further adjust to the particularly light wind. Then, just before 11.30, they made their way to the starting line. As the race now got underway, most of the boats preferred the windward side, like Francis Olivier Cohen, Amir Yam from Israel, and Alexander Marian from Brazil, while others like Hollands Hub Gillison and Francisco Martinez Bergerze from Spain chose to start on leeward. The extremely light weather at the upwind leg, however, demanded very delicate control from competitors. Finally, it was Cohen, the French, that rounded first the weather mark. He was followed closely by the Israel's Yam. During the downwind leg, Cohen now had to be extra vigilant as many boats were now closing in on him, among them those controlled by Yam, but also Marian and Martinez Bergaze, the Spaniard. All decisions made at this point would be critical. In the end, however, he was able to retain his position at the top of the race. Thanks to some excellent tactics at the downwind leg, he rounded the bottom mark first and headed for the second upwind. The others were certainly not ready to concede to this race yet. Holland's Hoop Gillison and Michael Johnson from Sweden were getting back in the game. And so many fierce, close battles ensured until the very last downwind leg, where the Dutch boat completed an incredible upset and was about to score the bullet. The French boat had not said its last word. Following a difficult maneuver, it passed in first, right on the finish line. After the race, it was time for the opening ceremony, attended by the organizers as well as local dignitaries and the island's mayor. They all offered a warm welcome to the participants gathered here in Sres and wished them a week full of fun and sailing success for the first races of the IOM European Championship. The opening day of the International 1 Meter Europeans was one with pretty shifty weather. A total of 15 races are scheduled on this first day. The 74 competitors were divided in five groups, with the best performers qualifying for the top one. Let's hear from the UK's Brad Gibson how he understands the format to work when it comes to the qualifications. We run through five heats, obviously starting at E heat and working through, and we have five heats of 20 boats. Uh, and we'll start off with an E fleet, and then it, it's just a straight promotion job. Basically, once, once the, we've had a couple of seeding races out of the way, it then turns into a facet where you will have 20 boats the top four from that race will stay on the water and 16 more boats will then go and join them they will race and then so on the same thing happening up until you get to a fleet that then is calculated as a score so essentially it simulates a race with 76 competitors in it and the guy who was last in e fleet will score 76th place and it will tear the whole way up the four that get promoted each time don't actually write down as a score. They just move straight in into the next up race. Once a full round is completed, the four or six lower, depending on which system we use, the low, those lowest competitors will then drop down and start the next round in the lower heat. So it's a promotion relegation system and it works really well. It feels like there's space between them. When the wind stabilized around five knots, the fleet was very much ready to hit the water. Heat E was the first one to start. The first three boats to finish the race would advance to Heat A, while the remaining two would proceed to Heat B, 
Mackey from USA alongside the Dutch Gerts and the Italian Puthod were the ones to occupy the first three spots here. Following that, it was time for Heat D to start, where Brazil's Marianne had a great start and was among the top at the weather mark. After a fast downwind leg, the boats headed for the second lap with Marianne now firmly in the lead. It often stuns spectators, the precision with which these athletes manage to control these one-meter boats. It's easy to forget that there's no one actually on board. Afterwards, it was time for Heat C, where the majority of the fleet started on port and then preferring the right side of the course. Among the top performances here were those from Francis Carre and Croatia's Jelicic. Even with such light winds, these sensitive and very small boats offered a great spectacle as they were sailing upwind. As the race progressed, Carre chose the left side at the second upwind and soon crossed ahead of his Croatian rival. Following these first heats, it was now time for Heat B to race. The race course was now set at the northern area where there was more wind and waves. That would make it more demanding for the sailors and the more experienced had an advantage. At the weather mark, it was Gibson that rounded first, followed by Longhi from Italy and the Croatian Ukas. And it was Gibson who finally managed to win this heat. Relax. Heat A followed right away. Here the British Elliot and the Italian Morbidelli had the best start and crossed the fleet. The Italian, however, did not manage to do so well in the rest of the race. He wasn't able to round the mark correctly and so lost several places. And this is merely day one in the excellently organized IOM European Championship, unfolding here in Croatia. The championship enters its second racing day here in Sres. After 12 completed heats yesterday and some well-earned rest, the sailors were back for another full day. Three races were planned for each heat, plus the three that were left incomplete from yesterday. A very clear start on the first race for Heat B. Croatia's Kovacavic started quite close to the pin end. The weather today was even stronger than yesterday, and real shifty too. The battle for the top four places here can only be described as fierce. After a quick downwind, the fleet was split as the boats rounded the gate. Germany's Amanda was among the top ones rounding the weather mark. But in the end, it was Ukas and Kovacavic, both from Croatia, leading the race. Then it was time for Heat A to start. Amanda was now the one who had an excellent start at the pin end. Yet it was Cohen from France that rounded the weather mark first. He had been benefiting from the shift so far and now was enjoying a safe lead. The rest of the fleet followed, battling it out for a place near the top. Francis Carre and Ukas from Croatia were among them. UK's Gibson was closing in on another Croatian, Matic. But let's hear a few words from the winner of this race on his performance today. So uh, I had a, a good start uh, and I was lucky because uh, there was uh, uh, a lift just where I was and it was not for the boat just behind so I could take a small lead like that. Good lead at the win one mark and I was lucky again because uh, I, I could escape with a gust uh, going uh, downwind and the others were still upwind so I could uh, take a big lead like that and uh, the, the end of the race was uh, quite okay except uh, the last uh, downwind where uh, I was in lulls in uh, small winds and the others were coming with a big gust and, uh, but at the end uh, I, could, uh, I could win it and it was, uh, I was very happy with that. Meanwhile, Spain's Martinez was the one with the best start in the fifth race of Heat B. He opted for the left side of the course, and he was rewarded for it after tacking. As he rounded on top of the others, the Dutch, Gertz, followed him. So was Ukas. The wind had dropped by now, so the downwind was slower. 
This gave sailors the chance to perform better, applying strategy both in downwind and upwind. Kovacavich and Uka's excellent tactics brought them to the top of the race. Not long after the start of Heat A, the fleet showed a preference for the side closer to the coastline. The UK's Edwards was the one to round first, in front of his compatriot, King. Yet there's another Briton here in stress who hadn't said his final word. Slowly but surely, the excellent Gibson overtook his rivals one by one. Soon he was right behind Edwards just before the last downwind. The pressure was on Edwards now. After he performed a bad rounding at the gate, Gibson claimed the first spot. Edwards had to settle for third place after Alexis Carre also overtook him. The Island of Stress is seeing some impressive sailing action so far. And more is yet to be seen as the regatta carries on during this week. A beautiful day of racing action unfolded in Stress today. The sun paid a visit to the Croatian island. This put some big smiles on the faces of competitors as they prepared their boats. Three races were planned for the day, and as for the results, nothing has been decided yet. Everything was still up in the air. The seventh race for Heat B started with USA's Mackie being the first on leeward. Together with Sweden's Brunhage, they tacked on port, then crossed the fleet. Yet the first to round the weather mark was the Croatian Ukas. He was followed closely by Francis Cohen and Gerrits from Holland. After a quick downwind, Ukas managed to stay ahead of Gerrits, who was giving chase. Another Dutch, Gillison, was now in third place. He was really quite fast on downwind. In the last upwind, he actually managed to overtake his compatriot slipping in second place behind Ukas. Both would now come against the big guns in Heat A, and this race started right away. It was UK's Edwards who enjoyed a big lead from early on in the first upwind and managed to position himself ahead of Croatia's Matic. In the downwind leg, however, another Croatian, Matula, as well as Gibson from the UK, made some excellent decisions in how they sailed the shifts and they both came dangerously close to Edwards. Gibson then tacked immediately and hit the right side of the course. But in the end, the coveted first place was stolen by another Briton. Graham Elliott managed to overtake everyone. A terrific performance. Matic managed to stay in second place. On the ninth race of Heat B, the wind dropped dramatically. Here, it was Croatia's Kovacevic with the best start at the center of the starting line. He managed to quickly gain speed and extend his lead from the others. After rounding the weather mark, he headed downwind, clearly ahead of the rest of the fleet still rounding the mark. The sea was now really calm, and the boats weren't too troubled by the waves as in earlier races. After rounding the gate, they all headed back upwind for a second lap. At that stage of the race, Croatia's Mario had managed to pass in front of Kovacevic. He had made the right choice going for the left side of the course. Kovacevic, though, would not let the bullet be taken from him without a fight. He sailed a good downwind and rounded first at the gate. This left his compatriot unable to catch up in the last upwind. So Kovacevic finished first. It was then time for the last race of the day. Mackie was once again the first boat at the pin end. He soon tacked on port, but it was Jelicic that crossed ahead from the right side. He rounded on top less than a boat's length ahead of the UK's Bontoc. Then it was a perfect downwind from there, and he even increased his lead from the rest of the fleet before rounding the gate. With Matic now in second place, the two Croatians sailed upwind, leading the race and they wisely kept close to shore in order to benefit from the shifts. Bontok, however, made a fantastic comeback from the left. Soon enough, he was crossing in front of both Croatians. There was now one more downwind and an upwind between him and victory. But his choice of the right side proved less than ideal, and this gave Jelicic the chance to return to the lead and win the race. 
but we're still only halfway through this exciting championship. There's yet time for other competitors to shine, and we might see many changes to the first places before the end. In the Croatian island of Sres, the fourth day of the IOM Europeans started with competing athletes from all over the world preparing their boats. It's a daily ritual in a sailing event at this level. Yes, it's exciting to take part, but if one has victory in mind, nothing can be left to mere luck. But let's hear a few words on these spectacular one-meter boats from one of the masters here in Sres, Holland's Walter Gertz. We have here a fin. The keel, the belt that's led, special uh, a special weight. It's not uh, it's not allowed to be heavier than uh, 2,500 grams in this class. We have a jib boom here. We can adjust the jib boom so that we can make all different settings of the sails. We can also do that with the the main boom here, and uh, we have also a backstay. And when we pull on the backstay, you can see that the, you can also retrim and trim your boat. You also have here an accu, and we have we call it a servo, and that's it's connected with this rudder so that we can steer with it. So when we pull this backwards, then it's getting tighter, and when I put it more to the front, it's getting fuller. We set the sails with light winds a bit fuller so that we have more power in the sails, and we have here the fang, which can adjust. The, the, the back leech tension of the mainsail. That's a funny addictive hobby. Back to the races. The 10th race for Heat B started in really light conditions. Croatia's Bakadic rounded second the weather mark behind Alexis Carre from France. Then they both headed downwind towards the gate, but nothing was decided just yet. During the second lap especially, there were some dramatic changes. In the end, after some fierce battles, it was Vesinovic from Croatia that won the race. It was then time for Heat A to start in similar conditions. In this race, the UK's Graham Bontoc jumped the gun during an upwind that proved quite slow. It was Chantal, the Israeli, who rounded first. Following the downwind, the first one to round the gate was another one of those excellent Croatians, Zvanko Jelicic. Yet it proved difficult for him to stay in the lead. The competition was fierce, and in the end, it was Francis Cohen who had won the race. In the 11th race of Heat B, the race committee decided to designate a different race area. The race moved to the southern side, where the wind was stronger. There, Francis Carre enjoyed a lead from early on. He managed to sustain it too, and thus the energetic Puthan from Italy was kept in second place. But the good news from them was that they both qualified for the next heat and had but a few moments rest before that one would start. Now it was Croatia's Skrill with the best start on leeward. But the UK's Martin Roberts built on more constant performance and rounded the weather mark first. He continued to be first at the gate, followed by Croatia's Matulia, and yet either of them was no match for Skrill in the end. The Croatian managed to overtake them both, then extended his lead at the downwind leg. All he had to do after that was to sail another upwind, and the bullet of the last race for today was his. All in all, this has been a great day for the Croatian sailors today. But could they improve their position even further? The days have passed really quickly in the IOM European Championship here in the Croatian island of Sres. But that's how it's often with such exciting sailing events. On this second to last day, the weather conditions are extremely light. This will pose a few challenges to the competitors gathered here. But let's hear a few words from Tansi Stepanovitz, who finished fourth in the London Olympics in the laser class and is also competing here in the IOMs. This is the first uh, European Championship in uh, models for me. Uh, until now I sailed maybe few races in, in these small boats and it's a total different feeling in sailing of, uh, comparing to laser because in laser you are sitting in the boat 
deciding in you have more time to decide the racing area is much bigger and here everything is small happens uh, very quickly and you have to decide in, in the second if you didn't trim uh, your boat uh, in one millimeter on one side then boat is not going straight and it's it's very hard to, to compete and especially if you don't have feeling and you don't train like every other sport uh, if you don't train you cannot be good the Croatians had a strong opening today too in the 11th race for heat B Kovacevic and Vuka started in the middle in great form but soon it was Britain's Bantok and Rossignol from France who benefited most from the right shift. They both rounded on top at the weather mark. Rossignol further closed the distance during downwind. When they reached the gate, he was less than a boat length behind Bantok. In the second upwind, the French approached the coast more and this way managed to cross ahead of Bantok. But they remained both quite close. In the final stretch, however, Rossignol kept his lead and so he scored the bullet. In Heat A, the Croatian Jelicic started really well on windward. Britain's Brad Gibson, however, put in a competitive performance in this race. So when they reached the mark, he was in the lead. During downwind, Gibson managed to extend his lead, but it was Jelicic that has now climbed in second place behind him. And these positions remained unchanged during the second upwind. It looked very likely Gibson would go for another bullet. And he sure did at the end. The Briton is on fire in this championship. Sweden's Brunhage was first on the pin end. After crossing the fleet, he headed to the right side of the course. Soon enough, he was leading the race together with Croatia's Stepanovic. After the downwind, Stepanovic chose the left gate and headed to the same side of the course. But this now gave Brunhage the chance to extend the distance between the two. Somewhat helped by a significant drop in the wind at this stage of the race, Britain's Graham Elliott succeeding in slipping into second place. Stepanovitz would not let him stay there, however. He fought fiercely, and in the end he reclaimed his spot after Brunhage. But even though we now reach the end of a very successful championship in wonderful Croatia, things are still close and a lot may yet change at the final day. At the last day of the IOM Europeans, as it happens in such events, some of the competitors and spectators really didn't wish for it to end. The weather here in Croatia was beautiful today, sunny and warm, a day belonging to summer. But this also meant the wind nearly disappeared too. The sailors now had to wait and hope for the wind to pick up. The day started with the race for Heat A, since this was not completed yesterday due to the lack of wind. Brad Gibson once again proved he's unstoppable. He was the first to round the weather mark, but the athlete from Britain was not too far ahead of Sweden's Brunhage. Both of them extended their distance from the rest of the fleet as they sailed downwind. There was minimal wind at this point, and the pace of the race had slowed down a lot. Brunhage had his moment in the second upwind, passing in front of the race. But Gibson had no intention of letting his rival win this. He stayed very close and waited for the right moment. He got his chance in the last upwind and proceeded to overtake his rival. It was yet another bullet for the excellent Gibson right at the end of this championship. After this race, the committee made an effort to organize another heat race, but they were only able to reach up to heat C. In that heat, it was Italy's Longhi who rounded first ahead of Novotny from Czech Republic. The sea around the Croatian island was now dead calm. Incredibly, these boats could still sail in such challenging conditions. Despite all this, Longhi managed to continue in first place, followed by Croatia's Maritits. The last upwind was all that was left between the Italian ace and victory in this last heat of the regatta. So, an extraordinary championship came to an end after 13 races here in Croatia. And it had one undisputed star and champion in the UK's Brad Gibson. 
The end of the IOM European saw results in the first three positions unchanged from yesterday. Brad Gibson is the champion, with Croatia's Zvanko Jelicic the runner-up. Another Briton, Graham Elliott, claimed third place. A memorable sailing event only comes to a fitting close with a beautiful award ceremony. And it was no different here in Croatia. Later in the evening then, it was time for the winners to receive their medals after a very successful championship, which included a large number of races, a wide variety of weather conditions, and some truly skilled competitors. Hope to see you all in next year's event. Thanks for watching.